It's time to prove our first big result about cosets, and for how nice a result this is, it's surprisingly easy to prove. Let G be a group, and H a subgroup of G. Then, the family of all cosets, H a, as a ranges over G, so just all the cosets of this subgroup H in the containing group G, all of these cosets make a partition of the group G, which means we have something like this going on. If the black ellipse is the group and we have some subgroup H, the cosets of that subgroup will partition the group. So every element of the group belongs to one and only one of the cosets of any subgroup H. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing cosets. It's of course important that you understand what cosets are for this lesson. In that lesson where we introduce cosets, this is one of the examples we saw. This is just a quick example of seeing the partition in action. We could have the group of additive integers mod 4 and this subgroup containing 0 and 2. We can take a look at the cosets of this subgroup and see that they partition the group into the set containing 1 and 3 and the set containing 2 and 0. So that's just an example. Let's prove that this always happens. To show that G is indeed partitioned by the cosets of the subgroup H, we need to begin by taking two arbitrary cosets of H H, say H A and H B, and show that they are either disjoint or they are equal. If the cosets are disjoint, then we're done. So we can assume they have some overlap, and we want to prove that if they have an overlap, they must in fact be completely equal. Now, if we're assuming that they have some overlap, again, because if they're disjoint, we're done. So let's assume they have some overlap. Then we can take some element, say X, from their intersection, right? If the intersection of HA and HB is not the empty set, we can take some element from their intersection. Now to make use of this element to reach our desired conclusion that HA equals HB, we will use this result that we proved in my lesson introducing cosets. This result says that if A is an element of the coset HB, then in fact HA is equal to HB, and we will use that here. And the way we'll use this result is by showing that this a is in fact an element of HB, and we're going to use this common element X in order to do that. Here's how it works. If X belongs to both of these cosets, then by definition, X equals H1A for some H1. And similarly, since X is in the coset HB, X equals H2B for some element of H, H2. But then, taking this equation, x equals h1a, and solving for a, multiplying by h1 inverse on the left, we find that a is equal to h1 inverse times x, but x is equal to h2 times b. So if we replace x with h2 times b, we have that a equals h1 inverse times h2 times b. And again, we can take inverses here because h is a subgroup. So we know we've got inverses. And also, because h is a subgroup, over here where we have h1 inverse times h2, well, subgroups are closed. So this also belongs to h. Thus, a is equal to some element of H times B, and thus by definition, A is an element of the coset HB. And now we can apply this result. That allows us to conclude, as desired, that the coset HA is equal to the coset HB. Thus, we've shown that for any two cosets, HA and HB, either they are disjoint, or if they do have some overlap, they must be equal. And in fact, this is the bulk of the work for showing that our group G is partitioned by the cosets of an arbitrary subgroup H. All that remains is to show that every element, say C, of the group G is indeed in one of the cosets. And that's very straightforward. We'll claim that this element C of the group G is an element of the coset 
HC. Now, why is this true? Well, because the identity E times C is an element of HC by definition, because the identity element E has to be an element of H, because H is a subgroup. So it must contain the group's identity element E, but then E times C is an element of HC, the coset by definition, and of course EC, by definition of identity, is just the element C. So C must be an element of HC. And so indeed, any element of the group does belong to some coset of the subgroup H. And that proves that the family of all cosets of a subgroup will be a partition of the containing group. We've shown that every element of the group does belong to one of the cosets, and we've shown that all of the distinct cosets are disjoint. So we've got a partition. Really cool, and we will use this result in the future. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions.